Hello and welcome back to a kooky corner of YouTube. Uh, if you haven't visited me before, um, welcome. And if you have been here before, then welcome back. I am pleased to meet you and uh, and see you again <laughs> for either occasion. I am kooky, uh, name and nature. <laughs> My name is Tori, but I go by kooky. Um, and today I was going to show you something that I've kind of been doing in a way for many years, um, but not in this particular way. Uh, so um, having confounded you enough, let me show you what I'm talking about. And it's these beautiful things now. <laughs> it goes on. Um, if you are a fisher, a sewer, uh, or maybe a collage artist, um, you will maybe have come across this. Um, it is what is known as a snippet roll. Now, this is a collage snippet roll, and so this is mainly made up of scrap papers that I had collected in a little folder. Little bits, little offcuts of things, things I've used for collage. And I was thinking of how I was going to put together some um, cards or um, ATCs. I'll be doing a video on ATCs later, probably next week. I think that's coming out. So I've got a video on ATCs, ACEOs and OOAKs. <laughs> We're going to have to wait for that one. And I was thinking if you want to do um, a quick card for somebody, maybe... Uh, you could have this roll of backing ready to roll, so to speak. Um, and it's really cool. You can do it to any length you like. I've got mine to uh, a manageable length. Uh, it's a fair, fair length, but it's manageable. I haven't actually measured it because I didn't need to. Um, but this is, this is not the finished piece. This is as it is and you can embellish this with whatever you need to have made a start here but let me get on to the basics of this so what you're going to need to start off with is a roll of a length of paper now i have got rice paper here this is the japanese rice paper and i will show you the roll it's quite a big roll like this. It's held together with one of those little bands just to keep it from falling apart. Um, and as you can see, I've cut myself off a three inch length from that side. Um, so I measured down um, three inches all the way around and with a little scalpel. Somewhere here, where's my scalpel? Literally one of these kind of cut my way around and I was cut, wasn't cutting very deeply um, just a certain amount so let me let me show you it's easier let me uh, put my band back on to hold this together once you've got one roll off it's easier to start doing the others if you see what I mean um, it doesn't have to be rice paper by the way while I'm doing this it can be um, Maybe a till roll. Old till rolls are great for this. You can just cut off an amount that you need. I'm just going to concentrate now for a minute. So I'm going to follow the line around where I already got now. To get that original, original line, I used an elastic band positioned three inches down and then just cut against that. But because I've got this line already here, I am using that as my guide. Uh, I'm not putting too much pressure on this because it's quite a sharp knife um, and hopefully I'll get that around to the beginning. There we go. It's a little bit jaggedy but it's not a big problem. I can see how far I've rolled off enough and what I should do is, this is kind of the sensible way, is just to roll it up as I'm going. So I've got a little roll that's coming off and 
just keep rolling 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 <laughs> I promise I won't sing too much uh, kind of to there now if I want this longer all I then need to do now is just to cut again again not very deeply just keep cutting all the way around actually there's a fair bit still there so you kind of get to the point where you've got enough maybe with a pair of scissors <laughs> being sensible using a pair of scissors to cut off what I need and that's as easy as that bit is now this was a roll of Japanese uh, rice paper it's humongous look there's loads on there absolutely loads um so and i can cut three inches down probably another couple of times and then have a bigger bit down there but it's going to last me a while so it was worth the investment um the reason i've gone rice paper is that it's quite a strong paper and i have been looking at a few videos and i'll explain to you um the reasoning behind this and the inspiration for this actually let me put this scalpel away before i cause myself any damage I'll put that away so now i've got two more bits to go on which is rather cool and a nice length to work on um and basically you're going to need this you are going to need if you're going to do it like I'm doing it. I'm showing you how I'm doing it. You can do it with PVA, whatever you like. But I'm using this beauteous Nori paste. It's by Yasutomo. And my inspiration, actually, because I was looking for other things that Yasutomo do, I actually discovered that they had um, a YouTube channel. And the lady on there who works for Yasutomo was kind of going through how you can cut down these rolls from uh, they have their own brand of rice paper. This isn't it. This, my, this is my Amazon purchase to try it out. Um, but you can get Yasutomo um, rice paper rolls. And they do all different kinds of paper. They did brushes. They did crayons. A load of stuff. But I went on originally to look at other things I could do with this Nori paste. Um, and I'm finding that this is absolutely brilliant for sticking down collage papers it also will stick fabrics from what i gather and um i think the only thing it's not good with is vinyl now the reason behind this is it's a very it's a slow drying paste so it's not like a quick um pva fix it's a slow drying starch paste um glue and if we look at this one that I've already done, it, I've actually coated this on both sides and it's dried completely matte and there is no trace of that nori glue on here at all. Not one bit. It's made a nice crinkly paper. So, and, and the rice paper that it's stuck to is quite strong. Um, but there's, there's no trace of it and I actually glued it down with an ori paste and coated it over the top which uh i'm really impressed with it to be fair um it's it's not cheap i will say that i mean this is a big 10 ounce jar you can get i think it's a 20 ounce jar so an even bigger jar than this double the size and if you've seen any of my previous videos i've got these smaller ones here uh, I don't think this is Yasutomo, this is Yamato. So it's a different um, company that's done these two, Yamato, but it's a starch paste in the same way. So I'm going to try these out as well, see if they are as good as um, the, the Nori paste. I do believe there is another one called Yes, and I think that is a starch paste, paste as well. Uh, but this is the one that I wanted to try and so i got myself some of that and it's let me show you the inside of it it's kind of look i've used a fair bit of it but it's kind of proper paste like it's non-toxic 
you can do this with your fingers if you want to it's not going to cause you any problem you can reposition things really quickly so if you lay something down and you don't like it you can then pull it up and reposition it uh, because this will give you the time to do that um, I'm I'm happy to be using this really I mean and I've got smaller versions if you've seen this one as well that I can stick in my um, travel kit so I can stick one of these in my travel kit and go away with it same kind of thing and I do believe there is a way to make your own starch glue I haven't looked into it fully but if you want to do that then be my guest have a search up and see for cheapness you might be able to make a, a cheaper version so it's a natural slow drying slow drying starch adhesive for school art and craft supplies it doesn't soak through fabric so if you want to stick down fabric onto this as well you can do it washes off your hands and clothing easily which is great for me because i am messy it's safe for kids uh, you can thin it with water if you want to you can also as i found out on a video mix it with pva glue to get more of a strength to it more of a gripping strength but i haven't needed it for this anyway i've waffled on enough and so what you will need apart from your roll of paper is uh, some scrap papers which i'm just going to gather now and we'll start to lay this down okay so i've got a silicon sheet that i'm going to put underneath to um, protect my desk i've got my nori paste I've got a selection of papers now. I'm not going to do the whole of this. I'm just going to do a section of it to show you how to do it, basically. It's really simple. I have got a little glue spreader. You can use your fingers. You can use a brush. Whatever you like, it is washable, so it is not a problem. So, first thing I'm going to do, dibble into my nori paste, and I am going to get an area of glue down. Whoops. <laughs> First mistake, <laughs> flip it down. Um, and coat the back of this, just a small area to start off with. Now uh, you've got quite a bit of working time with this as well, so it will give you a little bit of time to work with it. So I've got a selection of some papers here on the side. Um, I'm just going to rip into some, start sticking it down. Actually, I'm going to reposition that one and stick it there on that edge. Now I've got some mulberry paper, which I am going to add in to there. And over the top of that, I'm just going to stick it down with more nori paste. Now this will disappear. You will not be able to see it. It doesn't leave a glossy finish. It completely goes away and you can't see any of it, which is amazing. Um, I've got some gel printed papers here I'm going to just rip into. And let's get that on down there. If it overhangs, it doesn't matter. You can trim these down however you want to. The other thing you'll notice is when you put down tissue papers, uh, you know when you put down um, PVA glue, it kind of makes the tissue paper go um, transparent. It doesn't so much with this. It's, uh, it kind of leaves it in a nice matte state. I kind of like that over there. Yeah, let's try that. So slapping more of this on i have a feeling i might be buying some more of this soon because <laughs> it's going to take my life up this is actually very relaxing as well just putting some papers together uh what have we got here i've got some some of these stars let's get some of those on there let's get them whacked at that top end there and more paste on top of that. Uh, you can tint the nori paper, so if you wanted to add something into it, separate a bit out and add a colour into it, 
that's another thing that you can do. As I say, I only grabbed a few of these out just so I could show you how this how this goes down. But I spent yesterday a happy afternoon sitting and gluing a whole length of this down and I had a blast. Uh, I've got loads of other papers I can use with this as well. Um, and I'm also going to get my gel plate out and make myself a few more papers too. These, I've still got a load of different kinds of paper. Even this old, this is just some uh, wet strength, wet strength tissue paper um, with some scribbles of ink on it, which works perfectly well. You could do some asemic writing on this and, you know, you can layer it up as much as you like, as much or as little as you like. Look at that. It's beautiful. <laughs> I am really, really impressed. Seriously. I love it. And I'm going to be playing a lot with this. It's supremely engrossing for me to do this. And really simple, as you can see. I'm not going to go too far with this. I'm not going to do the whole roll, don't worry. <laughs> but you can see how nicely this goes down. Let me, uh, let's have another bit more lettering on here. So I'm going to put some up there like that. Really cool. And some more of our tissue paper. Look, you can see through that. It's going to dry matte. It's not going to dry glossy, which is cool if you like that. And if you want to make it glossy, you can make it glossy afterwards. But just as a beginner, I am really enjoying this so much. Okay, I am going to stop there because otherwise this video is going to go on forever and I'm just going to be talking forever. Uh, the joy with these silicon spreaders is you can just wipe them down. Oh, that's clean. That's, that's all good to go in there. And pop the lid back on there. That's all ready to go for another time. So you can see how that's going with that. Let me move all this to one side and I'll clear my desk and show you other things that we can do with this. So back to the long roll I made yesterday. I finished it off and then I let it dry and it was dried super quick because we've got some really warm weather at the minute in the UK. And then I just had a little play with some of my supplies. So I've been doing a little bit of writing on there. You can use, what did I use? Um, 14B and you can get some lovely marks. It, it goes straight over that nori paste without any problem whatsoever. So you can start to add in like mark making. If you've got a white pencil, you can add a mark making into it. Look how it just, it's just beautiful. It lays down so well. You can go over this with gel pens. So it's, this is not the paper. This is my gel pen playing up. It's one of those, it's having a moment. There we go. But look at that. Look how cool that is. Um, I also, because I am a glittery magpie, um, use some of this metallic gold paint. You can use any paint on it. I'm just going to swap a bit on with my finger there. Just wipe it in into any of the crap, cracks that you want to highlight. And then on top of that, I went in with, actually it was this one I went in with, um, some of the Glitterific on top of this. Let's try a bit of the purple one just for the heck. And grab some out with my little skewer. And all I did with this was just lay it down to get some glittery bits on here. I am in love with this. 
so much. This whole technique is just great because twofold, I have got some cards that I want to make. Um, and I also want to show you how to do the ATCs with that I have in mind uh, for the video next week, which will be coming out probably Tuesday next week, I would say. Um, other things you can use on that. I've got some of these Shurning Deco pens. So you can go, hopefully this one's going to work off the bat. Oh, it needs a little needle in it just to free it up a bit. Get a bit of a poke around now. <laughs> okay. See, anything you like. It's a proper collage fodder. You can use this for anything. Now, my point about this is that when you want to use this as a backing for something, um, I'm just trying to keep my scissors that have hidden themselves. You decide how much you want and snip it off. I'm going to snip it off to there. And you've got an automatic backing ready to go on a card or to make a topper for something. And I'm just going to trim this off the top here. Well, that's ready to go. And then I've got some little metallic leaves that I cut out on my um, on my Big Shot die cutter. I do believe these are Tim Holtz ones, but I'll double check with that. But it, it doesn't matter because it's anything. And look how pretty that is, how it goes down. And that you could layer up on another piece of card if you wanted to. So I'm just going through my stash of things I've got here. But you could you can see how that's gonna go. You could layer that up and then that would make a beautiful card for someone. You could stick that down with some of the deco uh, not deco, this gem tack. Gem tack is great for sticking these things down. And you've got an instant card. And how quick is that? You know, you just I've literally just snipped that bit off. You can add in any additions you want to. You can write on it. You can add other kinds of toppers onto it. And it's just a brilliant way to make yourself a really quick set of cards. And um, all you've done is to spend some time making up your roll, which is a lot of fun, I have to say. <laughs> I'm going to make up a few more. And then you could do them in different colorways. So you could have like blues and greens and whatever you want, whatever you fancy. You could theme your rolls to however you want it to be and use whatever materials and collage materials you've got. As I say, you can even stick fabric into it. And I think that's a really great, great way to make something ready to go so that you can instantly make a set of cards or ATCs or ACEOs or whatever it is you want to make. And they'll be ready in no time because of your prepared roll. Um, so yeah, go and check out the Yasutomo web, uh, website, uh, YouTube channel. There's lots on there as well for different things. If you are interested in mixed media, do pop along there. Look at all the different things that they have and all the different ideas you can get. I will leave a link to that down in my description box. Hope you've enjoyed this. And um, I certainly have. have to say, <laughs> I've had a blast. <laughs> it's just like going back to school and just playing around with bits of paper and some glue that's not going to harm you in any way whatsoever. I think you can even eat it. I don't take my word for it and don't try it, but <laughs> I think it is, it's just that um, non-toxic that it, it, it's not going to hurt, hurt you in any way. Anyway, that's enough of my waffle. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me the thumbs up. So show me your thumbs, show me your thumbs. And also, if you're liking the content that I do on a regular basis, click the subscribe button. And when you've subscribed, click on the bell and then you can select to see whenever I upload a video and you'll not miss a thing here at Kooky Corner. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you back here soon. 
with something else. Bye for now.